has a question I think is worthy of answering since we just mentioned triggers. He says, how do you help your wife when she is triggered a lot due to cheating years ago? Mm. And obviously there are so many implications we can make about why that would be, right? But I love the fact that you asked the question. You said, how can I help my wife when she is triggered? To me, that is huge because a lot of times nobody's thinking about that because of the way triggers display. Right? Triggers can display as hostile, angry, scared, all of these things. And if you don't have the right mindset, you can take that as an assault upon you. I think for a, a great step would be to be as supportive as you can. You think about mm -hmm. PTSD, right? Post, post stress disorder. Post traumatic post stress disorder. Post traumatic stress disorder, right? You think about that, how a person who has gone through the war, who is triggered, and all of a sudden they start acting out. I remember, I'll never forget, I was in a bank one time, and this man who we all knew, he was the guy who walked around and he talked to everybody, he helped everybody with their groceries. He had like a jar of, of coins. He went into the bank, he dropped the coins, and he lost it. The sound of the coins, I think, triggered him. He jumps to the ground, he's like, get out, everybody get out. He's hollering, he's going in, and everybody's like, what is going on? Well, we knew him. He was like, we, were, we knew his issues. So somebody from the bank came, got him, helped him, you know, dealt with him. And so that's what we got to think about. Post-infidelity stress disorder is mm -hmm. a real thing. It's not an official diagnosis, but it's talked about in this industry big time. Mm -hmm. That you don't know when your spouse is going to have a flashback, a moment, a trigger, a feeling, a sense, a smell. If you think about it, you might have had triggers from when you were a child. There's a trigger that I have. I don't know what it's about, but whenever I smell lavender, it brings me back to a street I was walking on by myself when I was seven years old. And I think about, and I see the lavender in everything. So triggers are a part of how our brains actually protect us from things, right? It's a warning, hey, danger zone, this is about to happen. So how do you help your spouse? by being as supportive as you can. Sometimes it's about closing loops. Sometimes you never had the proper full disclosure of actually what happened or how it came to an end. And so now your partner is forced to create and make up a story that they never had the real answers to. So is supportive and transparent and honest that you can be of your spouse when they're going through tr uh, triggers, that is the first step. And then the other part of it is really on them. Absolutely. I totally agree 1000%. And let me just say this. Typically, the one who's been hurt in the relationship is the one doing all the, all the reading, all the searching, or the researching. They're trying to figure out, what do I need to know? What do I need to do? I would say match them in their effort to become just as knowledgeable mm -hmm. about the triggers as well. Because sometimes the spouse can feel like, I'm all by myself. I'm doing this on my own. You don't care. You don't even know. It. This, yeah. You need to, you need to um, partner with them and sometimes overcompensate you know, for what they don't know and bring suggestions and work through it with them. When they're down, you're down. When they're up, you're up. You know, you have to have compassion and empathy uh, and a sensitivity to what they're going through. And when you show up the right way, boom, that's how you're helping it. But if you're defensive and you shut down and here we go again, we should be beyond this by now. Right. Well, possibly so. But if you do nothing to get beyond it, it will remain with you forever. If you're intentional, in taking the steps to get beyond the trigger, the triggers will And that's the go. lack of sensitivity that we hear a lot. Like, you should be over this by now. Get over it. It's been this, it's been a year. Other people that I know, they're fine, and it's only been six months. See, that's, that's the misconception that there's some actual time mm -hmm. limit on when you should be over your triggers. It, there really isn't. That's why the key is for you to get in a process. If you're in the process and on the journey to recovery, doing the things that you're, you need to do for yourself and then your spouse is actually supporting you in that journey, it will expedite that journey. But if you're sitting around waiting on your spouse to do everything or if your spouse is very insensitive to the moments when you're having triggers, it's just going to take way longer than it has to. Absolutely.